this episode is about separation, family separation, and how myself, my siblings, and parents got separated out of the love of, you know, greener pastures and goals. We call, we say greener pastures. For those of us that grew up in the western side of the world, western part of the world, I'm talking to, you know, Africans, fellow Africans right now. For our parents, it was greener pastures, or they called it greener pastures. Wow, this one is an episode to listen to. It took everything in me before I could actually upload this particular episode because we'd recorded it a few weeks ago, but I just never got the courage to upload it. And I've been sort of praying and um, just trying to find out to actually put it together for it to make sense to the world out there. This episode is about separation, family separation, and how myself, my siblings, and parents got separated out of the love of, you know, greener pastures and um, goals. We, call, we say greener pastures. For those of us that grew up in the western side of the world, western part of the world, I'm talking to, you know, Africans, fellow Africans right now. Um, for our parents, it was greener pastures, we called it. Or they called it greener pastures. But for us, now in this part of the world, we talk about goals, you know, setting your goals, being ambitious and doing things for yourself. It's the same journey, but just refer to different things. At least that's how I see it. I always come up here and say the way I see it. From my perspective, you probably have a different perspective to it. But this is yet me sharing my truth. And it took a lot of courage for me to actually eventually put this episode together. The plan is to split it over two episodes. So hopefully you listen to this, resonates with you, and you know you're not alone. You're not alone. Nelson Mandela said, courage is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. And this is me triumphing over the spirit of fear. It's not like I'm not afraid to share this. It's not a big deal. You know, some of you are listening like, oh, it's not a big deal. My family went through worse. But yeah, it's my story. And it's how I felt about it. And I thought, you know what? Do I want to be this vulnerable this early or in the, in the year? <laughs> yeah, why not? And Maya Angelou said, courage is the most important of all the virtues because without courage, you can't practice any other virtue consistently. Look at that. So yeah, this is me being courageous. Now, you'll be listening to a recording from myself, my siblings, and my mother sharing just a little tiny part of our story and our journey into my parents' definition of greener pastures. While I was putting this together, I did some research myself. As over the years, I've shared stories here and there, depending on the conversations I'm having with friends. Um, and people will tap me at the end of it, or, or you know, friends, or, or general, when I'm even speaking. I tend to share some of my stories every now and again. And people will tap me and say, you know what, girl, how are you still here doing all of this? saying <laughs> but then a friend of mine recently said not just one a lot of a, a couple of my friend I think I've come here to tell you about one of my friend that took me to dinner and said where are you running from and I've told you guys about another friend of mine that said you know what Esther when is that book coming out you need to write a book and recently I went out with a friend of mine and she said oh separation anxiety um and she didn't even know I had it in her works it was one of the episodes I'd always wanted to record or just to tell and because of what I do for a living as a career and personal development coach, I get people every now and again, especially this time, in the past couple of years, I think about three years now, the United Kingdom has given opportunities to people, most especially Africans, to come into the UK with their family members and some as dependents. And some of them have actually not had the, um, some of them have just decided to come in by themselves and left their family back home. And recently, the law has changed again. If you're looking to come into the UK, you may not have the opportunity to bring your family along with you. This is this has now started and erupted a lot of things for family, and they don't even know what to do. The ones there are contemplating sending their children back to Africa. The ones there that are still have their children in Africa are still looking desperately for how to bring their children here. So this is for somebody. Hopefully, hopefully it helps you create. It trickles something down you, not to discourage you, not to encourage you, 
but at least gives you an idea of how you can potentially go about it and maybe do something better than my parents did, something better than me and my siblings did. I hope this resonates with someone and I hope you are able to get something from it. Like I said, I did some research as well into some, you know, just read some psychologist or um, stuff about it. And separation from parents, I came across this article from um, a, um, a Stanford University psychologist. Um, separation from parents removes children's most important protection and generates a new trauma. And sisters, misters, I know you all know it, that irrespective of separations, family separations, there is still trauma. One way or the other, they're still going to be traumatized. Recently, my six-year-old came home complaining about being bullied at school. My six-year-old, my six-year-old, very sweet human being, such a sweetheart. She has the loveliest smile, but won't mothers or parents say that about all their children? <laughs> yeah, no. But she has the sweetest smile. She's also got, she had a speech delay. Now she, she, she's talkative. I don't know if I've ever mentioned it yet, but growing up, she was our first daughter. She's our first daughter. And um, it was a struggle by the time she turned two and she wasn't even speaking yet. So we got concerned and started to do everything we can. Maybe that for another episode. But with our delay, she, you know, she still struggles to find some words sometimes. And she's got to think about it before she can actually speak it. And it's always been something that I am afraid of. Like, I don't want her to be bullied. <laughs> by the time children are age, which I know, you know, I, every now and again, you come across this video. <laughs> on social media of a two-year-old or speaking and chatting away or of a three-year-old that can recite a whole book and read a whole book and stuff. And yeah, I've had my own episode of it or share of it. I will come back and want another episode to talk about her. But she recently came on my talk about bullying. And oh my God, it started one day and then the second day she said it again. And the third day before she actually used the B word, bully. And my heart just sunk. Unfortunately, it was a Friday, so I couldn't even get my headgear on, tie my African wrapper and put on my African blouse to go to a school and give it out to them. So I waited. So I had to wait all weekend. Went to church and prayed for direction and wisdom before I then showed up at school on Monday. Mother. Good. So trauma will still come one way or the other. But how can we manage it and help? the children or the lives that have been placed in our hands because children are a gift from God, isn't it? Another paragraph in the article, I, one of the articles I read about the family separation is, obviously, separation from parents is traumatic. It both removes children's most important protection and generates a new trauma. Indeed, in studies of institutionalized children, such separation has been found to disrupt normal child development and to have long-term negative consequences for their psychological and physical health. In our own research, we are documenting that early adverse experiences have detrimental behavioral and biological consequences for children and adolescents years later. Now, this is not to stop your decision in bringing your family closer or separating from your family to seek greener pastures. It is not but there are ways to go about it and be very intentional. Everything in life is possible. Be intentional. I wish those of you on this journey, as you listen to this particular episode, I wish you, and I pray for wisdom. I wish you good luck, all the best. I pray for wisdom for you. Some people are already suffering it. And every time when I get someone on the end of the call talking to me about they need a job desperately because they need to put money together, for their family to bring in their family or they need money to put together ASAP so they can send their family back home. My heart sinks even deeper. It breaks my heart. I sit here, I work from home, so I sit here every now and again speaking to another mother on the phone in tears and another father on the phone in tears and a sister on the phone in tears. I hope you all find healing. I hope one way or the other, God blesses you with that wisdom that you need to help your family members transition right. I hope you listen and be blessed and learn one thing or the other. Hey, hey, it's your girl, Esther A. At least, even if I'm not your girl, I'm still somebody. I'm human being and I'm someone's daughter. I'm someone's sister. I'm a wife. I'm a mom to somebody. So I am some people's girl. 
whatever you think. And if you're thinking otherwise right now, you're a village people, okay? So it's another episode of Not For My Village People. And today, this is a special episode. And even before we start, I'm about to start crying. But I did promise you guys that this year, less vulnerability because of specific reasons. But doesn't mean I'm not going to be sharing to those that I need to share to. But this is like, I feel a battle that we've sort of won. We're not all there yet because obviously life has its way of giving and taking, isn't it? I know you know that. If you don't know that, don't be on the village people side of things. It's another episode of Not For My Village People. And today I brought you guys some special people. I don't only have one person on this particular episode. I've got multiple people on the particular episode and they're special to me. Like they mean the world to me. I breathe, I, do, I wake up mainly because of them. I just don't stay in bed because of them. Oftentimes, trust me, it's not my girls. I'm not, I've not brought my five-year-old or my six-year-old and my 16-month-old to this call today, but I've brought my family members. I've got my sisters and my mom on the call today. Oh, like seriously, I need a drum roll. Like whoever is editing this, just give me a drum roll right there, right there, right there, right there. Because... They are special ladies that I've bring on this call today. And I hope you resonate. I hope you click in. I hope you tune in. I hope you get something, the lessons learned. Because as I've always said, my podcast is not something you've never heard before. It's just another voice, a different perspective, and maybe a different way of telling the story. So today, my mom. And I've got my three other sisters on the call for us to discuss something very important that is actively and rampant in the world that we are in right now, especially in the recent times. In the past five years, it's something that has been out there, that is out there, still going on, still going to happen. Some people are actually looking to make that decision right now. So what I'm going to be talking about today is family separation, the consequences and how you can potentially move through it. It's never, and it's never, it's never been smooth. It will not be smooth, but how you can still stay together because glory be to God. You know, I say, I take my God everywhere I go to, right? Glory be to God. We've gone through that episode. We're somehow still going through it, but we've managed to stay together through it all, okay? But before we go in, it's not a cult. It's already a culture, right? We don't start it if we don't go to our quotable quotes. So I've got one that I found online that I thought just handles this perfectly. Family separation is like a storm passing through, leaving behind the strength and resilience that grows in its awake. And I have another one which says separated. I feel like this one is actually perfect for myself and my family. We're separated by geography but we are united by love. Our family story is a testament of the enduring power of connection. Exactly. Mm. We'll be big. Mm. And you can already hear that sound, mm. right? Mm. So yeah. I want to go quickly yeah. into the introduction of those that I've got on the call today. I'm going to start mm. from behind to the top, to the mega, mega, mega queen of the house. So I'm going to start from my beautiful... We can't even call our kid sister because she's she's almost 30. I can't believe it. I literally still picture this lady in her diapers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I picture her in her nappies. Honestly, I do. I do. I've got here today, Tife. I call her Tife. I saved her name with Tife me on my phone because that's exactly what she is to me. And she is a medical doctor. Aluko. Hi, Tife. I <laughs> thank you so much for joining me because she's a busy lady that one thank you so much for joining us today and we've got our immediate elder sister who is the third in the family so Tifa is the fourth girl now we're a big family we're a big family we've got both male and female now we have only today we, you're only getting to meet the female the queens the queens of my family We've got kings as well, but you're only meeting the queens today. So don't think, oh, you're all girls. No, we're not all girls. We've got a brother and we've got a father and they are actively reigning and taking charge in their own spaces. Okay. 
Now we've got our immediate elder sister who is called Tolu. She's, oh my goodness, you've got to meet her to love her. You've got to know her to love her. She's my, oh, she, she's the second mother to my children, to my babies, because I know if I don't have any way, I don't, I never even have anywhere to take them to. So whatever happens, they're going to their aunties, please. Who is their second actual mother? Hi, Tolu. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, you're so annoying, but <laughs> there we go. Look, I'm not annoying. Like, what else? What else? You know, thank you so much for joining. And then after Tolu, Tolu is my own immediate younger sister. She's the third and I'm the second in the family. You already know me. Do I need to introduce myself? No, you, I don't. We've got my big sister, the mother of the house. Oh, you got another lady. So no, no, no her. She's the Margaret Thatcher of the family. <laughs> She puts us all in check. She keeps us all in place. And she can sell a kidney and a house at, at, you know, she can just give it to us to, for us to leave. Her name is MJ. Hello, MJ. Hi, big sis. What's up? Hey, bestie. How are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> and you to be here. Yeah, good to, good to have you here. If you famously always heard me talk about my bestie, my bestie in the state, there you go. That's it. That's my big sister. Isn't that nice to have your bestie in the family? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got yeah, my yeah, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Um, yeah, I'm honored to be your bestie and I'm proud to be your big sis. Thank I'm not jealous you. at all. Yeah. Oh, Don't it's okay. Don't I, love, I love everybody. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm You're not all there right now. And even... You all will come to understand why the relationship has gone that far, that deep, that I can actually call my big sister my best friend. Hopefully, mm, mm. It because we could stay here all day, but we'll try not to stay here all day. You know your girl is a I, I think I think it will be better for another episode. That's, that's another long chapter to talk about. There you go. So a long chapter. So let's not talk about that. Right now. We're going to move it into another. Because even my old, all not for my village people, podcast can be about my family and we will never run out of stories to tell that's one yeah, of the, yeah. the serious thing about it we will never run out of things to talk about now now before we yeah. go on you know <laughs> those beautiful ladies you've just heard talk oh my goodness four 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 queens in the house someone gave birth to them someone birthed them i don't even know i don't think she ever dreamt of having you know, four girls, but it happened. We're here. We're yet to stay. We're yet to stay. And, if, you know, with all glory, with all grace, I'd like to introduce you all to my beautiful mother. Oh, mommy, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much. Hi, mama. Hello. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth. There you go. There you go. <laughs> There are queens and there are queens. This one is our own Queen Elizabeth. And that's her name, by the way. Her name is Elizabeth. Thank you Thanks so much. For me. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking time out to be here today. And, you know, like you all know, we'll, let's get out of the serious mode. I ne literally just needed to introduce them so we can get into the nitty gritty of everything that we're looking to talk about today. Like I said before, mm -hmm. about family separations. Now, three of the people that have just two, yeah, three. Yeah, three other people I've just introduced to you. They're currently joining us from the United States of America. And I've got myself living here in the UK. And then my other one that I literally snatched and COVID just added out to my glory and blessings here in the UK. Mm -hmm. in the UK who is mm -hmm. the, my own immediate younger sister, Tolu. She now lives in the UK and I'm hoping to keep her here. I'm hoping to Whatever. keep her here in the UK. Whatever. back out there. But she came from the States as well. They're all Americans. Um, she came from the States to join me here in the UK. And yeah, it's been God's grace. It's been blessing for us to have her here. So, you know, I can keep this introduction going forever, but obviously that's not why you're clicked into this particular episode. You want to learn about family separation. So I have a couple of questions that I put together for my siblings, for my family, for my mom, so we can talk about it. The first thing we're going to talk about is actually what led to our separation. What led to the fact that some of us are in the UK, which is not new because a lot of families are going through that as well. You hear about families, some of their siblings are in Africa, some are in Europe, some are in America, some are in a different continent entirely. But in this situation, we are spread across different countries. 
So what happened? What happened in that instance? So I'm going to go to my mom because obviously, you know, the parents make the decision, isn't it? Like, I know I will not be making the decision to have any of my children to go any other place apart from where I am. Thanks to, <laughs> you know, learning from experience. Yeah, so lesson learned. I want to, I want to mm-hmm. put a question to my mom. What led to the separation of our family, mom? Thank you for that question. Uh, you know, in Africa, the father is always, in, uh, all over the world, father is always the head of the household. But the little bit of difference in it is that in other parts of the world, apart from Africa, both husband and wife can make that decision together. But in Africa, men always want to be the one to make that decision. Your father wants, is looking for, I mean, for good life, greener pasture mm-hmm. for his children. So mm-hmm. as soon as he just saw an opportunity of, oh, there are some guys around here that can help with getting visa for the children. He just, he didn't even look back. Okay. Mm. AKA, AKA oh. Schengen visa. Yeah. Mm. He got right. Schengen visa. He got mm. visa visa, any mm. visa just get the children and the mother out of the country mm. so they have good life he goes for it that yeah. was the origin of the separation, that mm. was the, the separation where everybody landed, where their destiny mm. landed so, so, so why, uh, th- mm. this was how everything started with the separation, yeah. so a visa opportunity somewhere to either go to Schengen countries or go to the United States of America. And then it just, you know, without a very, without an in-depth reason behind it, it's just like greener pastures, we're getting out of Africa and that's it. Mm-hmm. And at mm-hmm. the time, hmm, thank you so much for that. Before I move, move forward in that question, because I remember very clearly, I was young then, I can't, yeah, I was 13 at the time. And I remember being called into the garden, but my big sister is here because I feel like we were old enough at the time to actually still remember. We talk about it a lot. And she still remembered that conversation, that we had that conversation with our dad. Like my mom just said, you know, decision of the man. And he, he just, my father made the decision that, you know, we want greener, he, wants, he wanted greener pastures for us. And yet off we go. If there's this opportunity to get out of Nigeria, we're doing it. So can you shed some more light into that, Big Sis? Can you shed some more light and tell us, you know, what you remember about that decision? And the process towards it entirely, yeah. Um, well, what I I mean, I still have everything in my head, like feel so fresh and like yesterday, he he wanted a better life, just like mom mom said. The only way for him to do it was where whatever any type of visa that comes out. So I remember then he, when he called us, he said, this family is moving. And we were, I was like moving to where? So he said, we are traveling abroad. Okay, so to where? His word exactly was me or more. But mm-hmm. that was what he said. Okay. So his goal was, Anyone that comes out, if you try U- UK and you get the visa, you're going. If you try US, if you get it, you're going. If you try Germany, you're going. So it, 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 that was what he wanted to do. And he, he tried his best. He, he worked through it. It wasn't easy. And I tried the US twice. I remembered I tried it twice. Myself and Shino, which is Esther. We tried it twice and it didn't come forth, but the rest, they were lucky to get the United States and we got a different one. So mm-hmm. that was the, yeah, that was the invention of the suppression. And we just all started splitting like that. Even the people that went to the United States didn't go together. It mm-hmm. was a different time. Mm-hmm. It was a lot. It was a lot. Amazing. Thank you so much for that response. Now, from what my big sis just said, she she did speak some languages there as well, which are not English. Um, as you know, I've always said it on this platform that I'm Nigerian and I'm Yoruba. So some of you listening, if you're actually from that part of the world, you probably would understand it. 
But some of the things my dad was saying was that, you know what, he didn't, he wasn't sure of what he wanted us to do. He wasn't sure where he wanted us to go. Um, but he just knew that he wanted to get us out of the country. And I, mm -hmm. the part I remember then was, you know, obviously I was that age. I wasn't 13 yet at the time. I think I was 11 because it took him a while mm -hmm. to actually mm -hmm. process everything. I remember he said he had some money. He came into some wealth. He came into some money and he just wanted us to leave the country. And there is something about my dad. I don't know if I've ever mentioned it before on this uh, on this platform. He started traveling, I think maybe young at a, at a young age, maybe in his 30s, early 30s. He had the opportunities to already travel abroad, even if it was African countries. Um, and sometimes I think he had traveled to, I can't remember if he had traveled to outside, Dubai. out yeah, to Dubai as well, outside the mm -hmm. country, outside the continent at the time. He had gone to some other countries. So when he said that, I was just excited because every time, one thing I remember that every time my dad was coming back from a trip that we, I know he's been picked up from the airport, he came back in a train and jumping <laughs> and Udi. <laughs> it was crazy he always looked like he was coming from somewhere that was really cold and from what my sister was saying now she mentioned dubai i don't think dubai was that cold but he always came back in the trainers and his joggers and his hoodies he looked really buff at the time i was like oh my dad is cute and he's he's all so when he said you guys would have the opportunity to travel abroad as well at the time we traveled to within africa i think he, he'd taken us to kutonu there's something I know about him that he, I appreciate about him. He, know, he always said something, traveling is education as well. Traveling is education. <laughs> so when you leave where you are, no matter what, even if it is within the same country, if you leave the country, the state where you are to another state, you will learn some, something new. You will be exposed to something new. So he had that in mind. And I guess that's one of the things that actually fueled his need to want to go. So thank you so much for providing that response. Now, to my next question, with different parts of the how old were you actually big mj how old I was were 17. you at the time at the time because, yeah. well, by the way she's in her 40s now so yeah mm -hmm. it's a long time ago that it started mm -hmm. and from what she said from my response earlier we didn't all travel together at the same time mm -hmm. from no. day one we went to boarding school so at the time yeah. myself my big sister and my immediate younger sister tolu she, we were already in boarding school we were trying to get through our secondary school would finish um, primary school, we're, we're getting into secondary school. But then Tifa, Dr. Dr. Aluko, Tifa and my brother, they were still in primary school. So they were pretty young at the time. But now, just to remember, who got so to they, the went, they went with mom 2001 when I was in Bangkok. Then they came. He came. Okay. They, those kids, they came, okay, you now, left first. They came to meet me after about 18 months in the state okay mom okay. did you leave first did you leave yeah, yeah. Left first. i was in babcock and she, i think she left to 2001 yeah, I left right at babcock university yeah i remember all right so mj was a babcock university and mom yeah. you left to the you left to the states so we were was, all still in nigeria okay yes. so mm -hmm. who was the first who, who were the first ones that joined you in the states mom so i was both um I left Tolu, I'm Tolu, and Moyo, my younger we... brother, left at the same time to meet mom. Okay. And then a year later, Bolu joined us. A year later. Good. Now, a on year that later. particular note, <clears throat> now, a year later, Bolu joined. Bolu, Bolu, you're 27, 28 now? I'm 29 now. You're 29 now. So at the time, how old were you when they left? I... How old did you, did you get to the States? So I came a year after Tolu and Moyo, and I think I might have been, I came in 2003, so nine, ten? Nine. I'm bad at math. Nine. Nine. Mm -hmm. So you were nine years old then, just three years mm -hmm. older than my, my daughter, yeah, three, uh, yeah, three years older than my daughter now. Mom, how did that make you feel that you had a, a nine-year-old in Nigeria? You were not Probably even... Probably less than five years. When I first came to the stage, Moya was in Nigeria, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And Moya came, when, when Moya and Tolulope came to join me, Moya celebrated his fifth birthday in the state. So wow. definitely, I left him in Nigeria, maybe it was around four, a, a little bit over three years hmm. when i left hmm. like that 
it was, oh, you are doing it because of your children. You got to mm. do this because of them. Mm. And I thank God today that everything went well, if not as planned, but we still thank God that everything went well. Mm. We are all here to rejoice <clears throat> and to be able to, to see each other again and say, oh, Lord, we, are, we thank you. All right. But it thank wasn't when you it was not easy at all. I could remember after Tolulokwe and Bodu, uh, Moyo joined me, Bodu would be calling from Nigeria, Mom, I'm here only by myself. Do you want me to die here? Like, I said, Bodu, calm down. Don't yeah. worry. We are, your dad is coming to bring you down here. I actually do not remember, remember that. that. I oh, don't yeah. remember Bodu. He, me. he would call me. He would say, Mom, I'm here by myself. I cannot do this. No, Mama Casey Mileti. Mama Pavum. Thank you for that. Noah. Oma Tomu Noah. Now, that's one of the things that, you know, thank you. Thank you, Mommy. Now, that's one of the things that I thought about because at the back then there was we, we, we social media wasn't really a thing. It was Africa. Can I, can I, oh, can I remind you guys yeah. where we used to call Mommy? Please uh -huh. remind us. Oh, I, I, I've forgotten. Ah, okay. There was a business center on our no, street. No, I remember that business center by the by the road. Yeah, going, going, going towards the hotel. Going going towards the going round, to round hotel. Round hotel. Yes. Yes. Took up a job there. Somebody used to work there. MJ I, used to work yes, there. Yes, MJ yeah, used to work there. Daddy, was, Daddy was not home. Daddy was not around too. Oh it was just me. It was really tough. It was really tough. Yeah, I had one of your letter that you wrote to me up till tomorrow, if I open that letter, I will try and control myself not to cry, yeah. but I'll cry. It was tough. Um, it was me. Yeah, it was me, Shino, oh. and Bolu. Even before Tolu and Moyo left, oh, yeah. Daddy was not around. <laughs> it, it was tough. It was tough. We literally always asked his driver then, um, Uncle Nuru, mm -hmm. where is he? He travel. He's not around. And we were just all by ourselves at home. Wow. And all of a sudden, he showed up and he took Tolu in, and Moyo again. I even Wait. remember the week I left, I mm -hmm. had just been picked up from boarding school because I yes. was so, I was sick. I found out that you are, you are coming from hospital. That they I was. Yeah, I was they God. just discharged me from the hospital. I had been there for like a week. After we left boarding school, and that's mm -hmm. when we we got on the on the flight, and then like I was I was even still sick after we got. I was fine. Hmm. All right, <laughs> great. Thank thank you guys so much. Oh my, that's there's a lot to unpack. There's a lot to unpack in that deep in the different stories there now. So we were disconnected from our parents because now mom was in the states and dad was away. I was in boarding school. Tolu was picked up from boarding school. And and she was sick. So she she had been taken to the hospital, discharged, and then flown to the United States to go and meet mom after yeah, about what do you year. expect from a family where the mother is not around, the dad is not around? Obviously, she will be sick because while we were in boarding school, I remember very well when everything was still like everybody were, were together. Yes. Daddy mm -hmm. always come to the school because we went to boarding school, school, visiting school, school visiting whatever. He comes literally every week mm. even he's meant to come every two weeks but he usually come every week and the week that he's not allowed to come in he will give the gates man money mm. to bring to us so at that time that we the family needed to have a shift it was intentional so a lot of things had to cut off a lot of things were affected so obviously Tolu would be sick because there was nobody going to check up on her. Going to check was, up. She, she didn't have enough to keep going in boarding school. We were not the type that have little to take to school. We have more than enough oh, to yeah, always take. Yeah, yeah. On we that have, particular note, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we give people like packs of provision and even after the session, we still come back home with more than enough. We are those students that we have things in our box in the common room and perhaps we hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, one of those students. Hundred percent. At Tolu's time, it wasn't the there was nothing. 
that luxury, that enough, it wasn't there anymore because daddy was busy trying to, okay, this is what I want for this family. And mommy was not home anymore. She doesn't really call us because we don't really have the phone. So I pick up a job. Wow. From a call center. That was yeah. why you picked up a job from a, a, a job. call center. It, it was a it was a call center. It was a video video store where the people rang video. I think the cassette. Yeah, the, the, the CD, the, 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 the DVDs, DVDs yeah. back in the day. Oh, yeah, yeah. The VHS, <laughs> the DVD. From Antititi, um, I still remember that lady's name, Antititi. <laughs> so, she, so she gave me that job. So that's where Olu had the opportunity to receive call or pick mommy's call or call mommy. Once in a while, it wasn't even all the time. And but I mean, that is it. It was it was different. Oh my it goodness. Was, oh it my was God. tough. I could, I it could, was tough. And now, after but, that, I picked up another job at the Caputo Caputo Tall along the road. Oh my Think, God. I don't remember I that called, one. Yeah, I, can't I did. Even I remember, remember this part of the At the, the business story. center. It was close to Mr. house, and I think that's Mira, your friend. How I got the, connected to Mr. and got connected to even my husband today. Because I always have to walk through that path. I can't even afford to take the bike. I walk all the way from the house to there. And then we were walking to church. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. Oh my God. If love. we continue the story, if we continue that, that, if we continue it, we probably will not even, this episode mm -hmm. will be on forever. But on that particular note, you know, with the, with the fact that we had the parents seizure, like literally the parents were just yeah, there anymore at it a was. particular point in our life and then you had to take a job now I, I think I've said it before on this particular podcast that um I was born with a silver spoon I just see myself that I was born with a silver spoon I was we were one of those children where in Nigeria in Nigeria West African Nigeria we would finish primary school and we were driven we were driven to school we were driven home like I'd never before I left Nigeria before we left Nigeria we never took public transports Okay, now, or at least I, I can remember taking public transport from the story my sister is telling now. I, I guess she might remember taking public transport when because she was the eldest I, at the time. I did it sneakily, I didn't let yeah. anybody know. But I slipped I out never, of the house and I did. Yeah, I never yeah. took public transport before I left Nigeria, and we were driven back and forth from school. And after school, prim especially primary school, we would go to a French school, a school, easy language school, then to learn um, French, how to speak French from way back in Nigeria. So we were born with a silver spoon. Like we were, we were not wealthy, like, you know, outrageously wealthy, but we were very, very comfortable and above average in Nigeria. So suddenly, because our father or, you know, parent decided that greener pastures was outside of Africa, a lot of things changed for us without preparation or without something to fall back on for those of us that were still back home. And it was just... One of us just left after the other. So my sister Tolu and Moya left. And then it was myself, my big sister and Bolu were left in the country. Maybe that's why I remember her so much on, in her diapers. In yeah. Her diapers. Maybe yeah. that's why, because she was yeah. always around. Whenever I get back from, um, from secondary school, because I was pretty much still in high school at the time. And whenever I get back home and everything. But now with all of this thing, because it sounded like a couple of years then, um, by the time Bolu would join mommy in the States. Now, mom, you had your eldest children not with you. You didn't have MJ and you didn't have myself with you there. And that went on for years, actually, because I remember I know I didn't leave Nigeria immediately because the American embassy would never give me the visa to, leave, to go to the States. So how did you cope when you eventually had the, two, the three children and your husband wasn't there? Your husband was not there. Two of your children were missing as well. These days, I can't even, I don't think I feel comfortable with my husband going on a weekend away with her, without all of us. So I don't see how I can cope with the two children. How did that make you feel in that season of your life, mommy? It wasn't easy, but talking about the husband thing, that has never been my problem because this is a platform where the reality has to come out. Right. We have never been close husband and wife like that. Hmm. But mm -hmm. I have problem is my children. Hmm. The one that are not with me, missing them like no man's land. 
the mm. one with me, we are all like, what we are looking for is not what we are. We came here for. We are getting fresh air. Yeah? We are getting mm, averagely good food, but it's not like it's so new to us because we are not poor back mm. in Nigeria. We are 100%. comfortable, like that. So it's not like we are we are hungry from where we are coming from. But what they are calling greener pasture here is like a torture mm. for myself and the children that are here with me. Mm. America is a scam. <laughs> America I, because I could, we, a scam. we go to school and the only one working, my children, it's not like we have a local standee. We don't. We came in with a visiting visa. And you know, America, or education for all they have to go to school so mm. long they are still in elementary school so immediately the guy here they were all enrolled in school they started going to school okay they have to go to school and I have to provide for them i have to make sure they have shelter there yeah. uh, is food on the table we could we, uh, we, uh, i should be able to pay light bills water bills and all that i should be able to clothe them so all these things, working for it all by myself, it's not easy. And the care that those children are supposed to get, they cannot get it. The Lope has to grow up fast. She has mm -hmm. to be started doing like a good big sister. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what I remember in our own life is that I will have to go and drop her in the school earlier than normal. What time? When I drop her finish, like like six o'clock in the office, school office. Right. Because I have to go to school. And the remaining two younger ones will be left at home to wait for the bus, the school bus. And myself, I have to be at work. Everywhere I was working that time, they know me quite all right that. You see that running to this side or running to this side, running like a headless chicken. That was mm. I was. So when I, sometimes when I drop to look at the school, School office like this. By the time I get to my car, I'm already soaked and wet, crying like, oh my God, leaving my child with them in the office. I left other two in the car. Sometimes they will be in my car to go and stand at the bus stop for the school bus to take them before I can go to my other job, to my own job. Meanwhile, I was coming from a night shift. Mm. To meet them, all those things together. Mm. Okay. Another example that make me cry is uh, my Moyo, my son. That boy was the one that was really, really affected about all this family separation. He will come back home. Oh, mom, do you know my friend Michael? I said, yeah, I know him. His dad came to have lunch with him today. I don't know when my dad is coming to have lunch with me. I said, oh, don't worry. If dad cannot have lunch with you, mom will have lunch with you. The second day, <laughs> I will tell my boss at work, please, mm. at 11 o'clock, can I quickly go and see my son? He will say, oh, okay, just make sure you clock out. I will go to Bojangus. I he love Bojangus then. I'll buy Bojangus, biscuits, and chicken for both of us. I will go during mm. his lunch. If my son see me, my son will be like, oh. he will just pretend sometimes, maybe I didn't dress well. It will be the, that's Moyo. Maybe you just look on the side like this. Okay. Mom, what is it? I want to come and have lunch with you now. Eh? Let's have lunch together. Oh, one of the teachers will just take us to one of the empty classroom to go and sit down and eat lunch with my sister. You see now, mom had lunch with you today. Okay, mom, thank you. Before another few weeks, my son will be complaining about somebody's dad came to have lunch with him. Somebody you have some more time you. out again from work so you can go there and do it. Mm -hmm. oh my yeah. As a mother now, now myself and MJ, we are mothers now. As a mother, now, I can't even imagine going through all of that stress. I don't go oh. through that stress and I can still, I, I, I still feel stress about yeah. pregnant mm -hmm. because I have, we have the grace of having the husband here with us and, and having to say, you know, we're going to split it. You know, you do it today. And let me keep saying today or this hour and that, but you did not have that luxury. Thank you for sharing those stories, mom. Now let's go to Tolu and Bolu. Tolu. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I had to stop it there. 
as the first part of this episode. Hopefully you click in again next week to listen to the other part of it. I'm not sure if I'll wait a whole week before I upload it, but I will be uploading it. But from the story my mom has just told, has just said about my brother and, you know, that just, oh my gosh, that just was like something. Agatha Christie said, a mother's love for a child is like nothing else in the world. It knows no law, no pity. It bears all things and crushes down remorselessly all that stands in its path. A mother's love. There is nothing like a mother's love. Motherhood. All love begins and ends there. Robert Browning said that. God bless my mother. <laughs> God bless all the mothers out there. I hope you've not just listened to the stories, but hopefully you're listening to this. Maybe you've been through it yourself. Hopefully you didn't get a lot of waterworks going. <laughs> Maybe it's just me getting the waterworks because obviously it's my story, right? But hopefully there's someone that's listened to this and it resonates with you and you're, you've picked one thing or the other so far. There is a second part to this and I will be uploading it. I promise you, I promise, promise, promise you. Before about to be mothers that have also clicked into this episode and you're listening. Elizabeth Stone said, making a decision to have a child is momentous. It is to decide forever to have your heart going, walking around outside your body. I'm going to repeat that just for the sake of it. Making the decision to have a child is momentous. It is to decide forever to have your heart go walking around outside your body. I didn't think that was it. When I've heard stories about motherhood or read books about mothers and they've done some things for their child, gone to jail for their child, took a bullet for their child. I'm like, well, maybe, maybe, maybe when I have my child, I will understand. Sisters, misters, with great joy in my heart, <laughs> I would like to tell you, <laughs> I understand what Elizabeth Stone meant by, you have your heart. Go walking around outside your body. Imagine, are you breathing? Are you even breathing? Every morning they leave the house. Every morning they leave the house. I said earlier at the beginning of this episode that, you know, my daughter coming back from school three consecutive days and eventually on the third day after maybe she found the right word to address what she's been going through at school, said the word I have dreaded for most of my adulthood. I was bullied at school when I was younger. I, I grew up, I was one of those children where, you know, they decide to give me dreadlocks as a child because it was a religious beliefs or something. So I wore dread. I had my dreadlocks on my head for primary school. And you can just imagine how that went with um, children my age. <laughs> it was not the most prettiest or beautiful look ever. <laughs> so they made me know it. They told it to me. They, they, yes, they did. So when she came home and yeah, something I'd always been afraid of. And then now my daughter is going through it or went through it or we're still in discussion, but that's not what I'm talking about today. My mother sharing those stories and sharing how it made her feel and how she had to stand in gap for our dad as well. Oh, goodness. It took me a while to actually know it because you will hear it in the next episode how she was just a mother in words to me at some point in my life. She was just, oh, yeah, she gave birth to me. I came out of her. Ooh, ah. <laughs> yes, that was what she was to me at some point. But now she is my mother. I don't know how she did everything she did. She's an angel. She's special to me. And everything she's hoped for, everything she hopes for, everything she's ever wanted for us, our children and herself, I pray she gets it. I pray God gives us the ability to take good care of her and show her more than the love that she deserves in this world. And out there, I pray you have your own good relationship with your parents or with your mother, if you do. Take time out to just say hello to her after this. Pick up a phone and give her a call. It's a lot to be a mother. <laughs> it's a lot to be a mother. I don't know how my grandmother has done it or did it. I don't know how my mother is doing it. I don't even know how I'm doing it. But yeah, it is something. But always remember that motherhood is a choice you make every day to put someone else's happiness and well-being ahead of your own, to teach the ad lessons to do the right thing, even when you're not sure what the right thing is. And to forgive yourself over and over again for doing everything wrong. Until the next episode. It's not for my village people, guys.